Hello, how to prevent box blight. This is the formal parterre at the front of Rose Cottage. It's one of the first projects I did when I moved in here just over 18 months ago. And I love a parterre. This is Buxus sempervirens and it's one of the box plants that is susceptible to box blight. And I remember when I decided to do this and I was installing this parterre, several people said to me, why are you going with box? Because there are alternatives. But I love box and I knew about box blight and I know about box tree caterpillar and I was prepared to take the risk. Now, box blight is a fungus and it thrives in damp, unventilated conditions. And once you've got a severe attack of it, there's not much you can do other than remove all the infected plants and destroy them. But there are some things you can do to prevent it. And it's in this video, I'm going to share those ideas. I've gone away and done quite a bit of research because this is my baby. I love this boxwood part here and I want it to stay around. So I'm going to do everything within my power to protect it. And I'm going to share those steps that you can take to prevent box blight in this video. I'll type them all up in the description box below this video. And you can download the transcript if you want. And there's nothing new under the sun. A lot of what I'm about to share with you, I've gone away and researched off the internet. So let's get into it. Let's talk about what we can do to prevent box blight in your formal boxwood parterre. Well, you'll see I'm holding a power tool here. Inevitably, that's going to need pruning. So the first step you can take is keep your power tool or any tool that you use for pruning your box clean and you can get uh, sterilizers and antiseptics for garden tools. So treat them and also treat them during the prune. Whilst you're pruning, give it a treat halfway through and don't use a tool on this section of parterre and then go and use the same tool somewhere else in the garden unless you clean it first. So that's the first step, keep your tools clean. The second thing is, be very wary of bringing new plants to where your parterre is. So if you're going to buy some more plants or even some additional box plants, keep them in quarantine away from the parterre for at least four weeks so that you can see if it's an infected plant. Now, because box blight is a fungus and it likes damp, humid conditions, it's a good idea to plant your parterre in a well ventilated space where air comes through. So I've planted mine here at the front of the cottage. There's a prevailing wind from over there and there's an open fence at the front. So that will allow the ventilation through the space. In addition to that, to aid ventilation, don't plant your plants too close together. Allow a little bit more distance between each plant to allow that ventilation through. Now, the next thing is watering. Because box blight is a fungus and it likes damp, wet, humid conditions, avoid watering from the top. Don't water from above, water at the base. Now, you'll never be able to stop rain from falling down, but you can reduce the amount of humidity around your plant by watering from the base. And what I've done here quite deliberately is I've put a mulch underneath and that is an ab absorbent carpet around the base of the plant. So any water that splashes down will be absorbed into the ground rather than splashing back up underneath and into the plant. Now, when it comes to pruning this plant, don't prune it too often. The more you prune it, the more compact it goes. And if it's compact, less ventilation will get into it. So I'm going to leave mine this year. I'm not going to prune this at all this year. I'm going to leave it and let it grow and it'll be straggly, but it will also be airy. But when I come to prune it next year, I will only prune it once. Some people prune these twice a year to get that compact habit. I'm deliberately not going to prune mine that often to avoid having that compact habit because that compact habit implies a lack of ventilation. If it's airy, air can get through it and ventilate it. And also when it comes to pruning, and in particular, the top of the hedge, try to avoid forming a concave top because that will encourage the water to drain into the center of the plant and create a humid center. 
If you prune it with a convex top, in other words a dome, that will encourage any rainwater to run to the outside. And that's better because it will avoid the dampness and the humidity at the core of the plant. When you've pruned your box, get rid of all the prunings. Don't allow them to sit on the ground. And also, any leaf drop, carefully go in and remove any leaf drop that's occurred over the seasons. Now, if you find that you have a hole in your hedge that you want to fill with more Buxus sempervirens, try to avoid introducing a new plant. It's much better to take a cutting from a healthy plant, develop it on site, and then install that into your parterre. When it comes to designing your parterre, design it with ventilation in mind, not just the location as I have here in this airy space, but don't have too many compactly designed hedges. Have a nice open plan and that will allow ventilation to flow through the parterre. When the parterre is installed and it's growing, try to avoid human contact. Don't be in there all the time brushing against it because that might spread any disease. And also, if it's near a path, plant it a little bit away from the path to avoid visitors brushing past it. So a wider path with more space is better than a narrow path where everyone's brushing past and making contact with your lovely Buxus sempervirens. Now, if possible, have breaks in hedges that will act as a kind of a natural fire break or a fungus break and it will stop any outbreaks from transferring along. So if you can, plant your Buxus in sections that don't make contact with each other and that can hold back the disease from spreading and keeping it, keep it localised. And if you do see anything suspicious, which might be an outbreak of box blight, keep your eye on it. And if necessary, remove it straight away. Now it might just be some burn from some water on a leaf, but it might be box blight. So keep your eye on it. And if you've got any suspicions, take it out. What you can do apparently is cut a little bit off and put it in a polythene bag. And if little white spores develop in that polythene bag, that can be your box blight. Get rid of it, destroy it, get it off the site. Don't put it on your compost heap. Now, when you plant a lot of plants together like this, they're all competing for resources underground in the soil. So it is important to feed your box. But as with watering, feed it at the bottom. And also don't overfeed it because you don't want to encourage too much leaf growth. So just try and find the right level of feeding to keep your plants healthy. Don't prune your box in wet conditions because if you start agitating and pruning that will give any fungus there the opportunity to spread especially if it's wet and moist and humid. So prune your box on a nice dry day. And when you've pruned it, give it a feed at the base to encourage it to recover from that pruning because pruning is damage at the end of the day. Why not consider an alternative to Buxus or Buxus sempervirens? There are lots of other plants that are not box plants that will create a dense little hedge-like habit. So you could consider an alternative. And in fact, there are now some box plants which have been found to be more resistant to box blight. And there's one called Buxus Faulkner. And I discovered that plant when I was having a garden visit to Chomley Gardens the other day, and they've just planted a whole new rose garden using Faulkner. So do consider an alternative if you've got any worries about Buxus sempervirens. Now I was happy to go with Buxus sempervirens because I love it. And I'm going to take precautions and hopefully as this grows and matures, some scientists somewhere will come up with a cure for Buxus blight. Now there are some fungicides which will help to suppress or control box blight, but my understanding is that they don't kill and or cure it completely. So it's a great idea to just practice these simple housekeeping tips. And so really the summary is the fungus likes damp, humid conditions. So do anything you can to ventilate your boxwood parterre. Hope you found that interesting. And don't forget, there's a whole playlist of videos about 
boxwood on my channel from topiary shapes to creating and designing and planting the parterre so go away and enjoy that if you're interested otherwise i'll see you soon for some more boxwood parterre adventures bye for now